Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Shapeless Skyrim. My name is Tori. My name is Tyler. Today, we are going to be checking out four mods to tweak your combat experience within Skyrim. Yes, we are. So, obviously, old trusty, rusty Valtheim Towers for this first combat experience, it's going to be phenomenal. So, Tyler, for the first mod here, I'm going to just go ahead and pull out my fists. Oh, oh, going to be brave. I'm going to be He's... a big brave boy. Oh, oh, look at that. I'm just going to do a quick block with my fists here. Yeah, mm. now you can block with your fists. You can add unarmed damage. And there's an additional unarmed skill perk tree with a mod. Oh, my God. I just read that so bad. <laughs> Kevlar's hand-to-hand -hand combat. How did you read it? Um, I was going to, I was literally about to say Kevin's. <laughs> this is Kevin's unarmed combat. This is the Kevin's unarmed punching. combat. He loves that shit. This mod yep. is actually suggested by Dragonblade Kal L. I'm pretty sure that's Superman's name, and we feel like Superman <laughs> with our big, uh, with our big strong hands that we with got. our big strong fists. Right now, it's still pretty weak. But what this gives you the option of is obviously you can now go hand to hand with an additional block factor. Right, so you could never block before, and now you can go ahead and just take it right to the forearm. That ain't gonna do nothing to you. And you can you can up the fun. Let me pull out a torch quick. All right, so I got my lit torch here. I'm gonna go ahead and do some blocking, and then, yep, you just go ahead and light them on fire. Good, good, yeah. good. Yeah, 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 it's beautiful. Because punching is always so fun, but boy, do I just hate that I can't take it right on the forearm to uh, to get away from some of that damage. But now... Now punching is an unstoppable and uh, more fully fleshed out version of combat. So, Tori, do you want to check out that uh, perk tree while we're fighting these bad boys? Tyler, the perk tree part doesn't work for us. Oh. I tried I tried moving the mod four times in the load order and it doesn't work. Oh, maybe you should have told me that previously. You are going to have uh, Apprentice hand-to-hand, -hand, which grants you plus 10 to hand-to-hand. -to -hand. You, you need to have 125 stamina to use. Journeyman, hand-to-hand, -hand, plus 15, 175 stamina. Expert, hand-to-hand, -hand, plus 20, 225 stamina. And Master, which is plus 25 and 300 stamina. I would like to see it buffed even more, honestly. Yeah, like after a certain point, the boys just go flying away when you hit them. I'd like that. Yeah, it just seems still a little bit weak. Like, yes, you get the additional perks. Yes, you're going to get, like, the block animation. So I guess you could just use this as the block animation, but mm -hmm. I would love for it to have an option at least to be all in one. Let's get, you know, maybe plus 75 on that hand. Yeah, hand. yeah something big. But I do understand the, the not going overboard part of it. Yeah, just, I just don't like not going overboard. I like going overboard. Yeah, I do like when things get a little bit crazy. And I think that something like this would, you know, pair very nicely with, uh, you know, maybe unenchanting the gloves of the pugilist and you putting those effects. In, so instead of like, oh, I'm equipping my ebony sword now, it's like, no, I'm putting on my ebony gauntlets that are equipped with the enchantment that's going to help me have very good, very big punches that will I want harm people severely. I want my big meaty paws to be able to crush someone's forehead in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really do want to be able to stomp that face right into the ground, but with your hand. So I would recommend trying it out if you... I would I would absolutely, like, pair it with, like, an OP punching mod or something. Yeah, because you can see that I'm pretty weak right about now. We're pretty weak, and while the block animation is still nice, I think it just needs a little more beef. Give me some beef. Yeah. And in, in full transparency here, uh, the perk tree aspect of this mod is not showing up for us. I tried moving the mod four or five times in the load order. It's just not appearing for us, but you should be able to go ahead and upgrade that. So but I did take off our Triforce ring, so I wonder if we get stronger if I put that on. It doesn't appear, doesn't appear that it's doing a whole lot. No. Punching is one of the funnest ways. Like the unarmed combat is so much fun in Skyrim because it's just it's just goofy and it's a it's a fun time. And also, if you're a badass, like you would be able to hurt someone with your fists. So I like the expansion to the unarmed thing and kind of adding a tree to it if it you know if it works for you. Tori, here's the thing. 
Yeah. I don't want to spend so much time in this episode uh, just running around punching people because if people want us to do, if people wanted that boring content and wanted to see us do that, they could just go uh-huh. back and watch the John Cena diaries. Sure, 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 yeah. Like, you know, maybe we'll tease them. They can watch our old, old, old videos that were bad. Mm-hmm. If people want to see us punching, there's already videos that exist of that. Yeah, there sure is. So how about we, um, uh, uh, we, uh, Tori, gonna have to help me on this one. I got nothing. Uh, maybe, oh, oh, sorry, what's that? Oh, Tyler, I think I hear the whispers of mod number two calling. (gasps) We should follow it. Tyler, we have followed the whisper here to Silent Moon's camp to show off mod number two. And for mod number two, the first thing that we have to do is kill some folk. Yeah, we have to kill quite a few folk. Now, it's not something we want to do. It's something we have to do. Yeah, it's sort of my God-given right. Well, I wouldn't say it's, you know, we don't even want to do it. It's just to oh, show sure. off yeah, the mod. Yeah, no, I hate We this. have to, and you are all making us do this. Yeah, it's because it's because you come here for these bots that we do have to kill these people. So their blood, their virtual blood's a little bit on your hands, on them. We take no pleasure in this whatsoever. Hey, friend, I'm sorry. I take no pleasure in this. Uh, no, I, I, I have a YouTube channel and people this. tell me to do this. So I'm not doing this because I hate you. I got nothing against you. I actually think you're a pretty good warrior. It's our YouTube audience. They're telling us, oh, look what you made us do. Ah, uh, shoot. You've contracted bone break fever. That sounds yeah. like a macho a, man Randy Savage that's move. A, that's just a dance move. There we go. I think that's Bone everyone. And feet. yes, it is, because there. you can see the mod taking effect as we speak. So this is automatically aura whisper after combat. And the purpose of this is to have that glowing red effect on all of the corpses after you're finished with combat to make it easier to find the bodies. Yep, that's exactly why I waited till nighttime also to show this, because if you go Look, through... You, you can see it through walls. Camp, yep, you can see it through walls, and it's it's super helpful for if you're fighting someone in the nighttime and you're like, oh shit, where are all the bodies? Well, now you can't miss them, because they should be all glowing red. I guess those ones didn't. They decided... I don't want to have this party going Maybe on. it's because that registered as like a separate combat I, encounter. I think that is exactly what happened. Yep. So uh, there are a few things about this mod that can kind of cause an issue, or I guess one major one, which is if you're using something like the Shrek sword, which is going to be an instant one hit kill, it's likely that it's not going to trigger. It has to be something where you have to at least hit it like once or twice with a regular ass sword before you just go and cut them down with one hit. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you can use a bow. You can use any weapon, but just, like, if you're using an OP mod, this probably won't work alongside it. Yep. And as you can see, it stays glowing for just long enough. Like, it won't stay yep. glowing. That's my favorite nope, thing. It's is not going it to just ends. stick around forever. Yeah. Yeah. It ends after, Gave like, us two a minutes. a good old amount of time. So, it's get in, get out. Like, you know, you're not going to fast travel, and then there's a bug where, oh, I can still see on the horizon, like, a red glow yeah. somewhere. Yep, it should go out relatively quickly, and it should uh, should just help you find what you need to find and loot those corpses automatically. You don't have to worry about casting any spells. Just taken care of. Now, after we've gone and done all this combat and uh huh, because looted you wanted these us bodies, to. we're so injured. So I think we should um, patch ourselves up with mod number three. Well, Tyler, we find ourselves here in Whiterun with Big Guard just miserably stuck in this hellscape where he is just too big and he has to watch under his feet at all times. And he's because got a normal-sized wanna... wife. Which is has caused some problems, but also some pretty some pretty rad shit, I'm not going to lie. Some good problems and some bad problems. <laughs> hey, not, hey, not always the worst problems. Mostly horrible problems. Really bad. Do you know how much calories that man has to intake to maintain that height? A fuck it's a... ton. It's a lot, but ever since ever since he became that size and not just the normal size, now he's got like a full six and a half inch penis. It's pretty great. So we come here because uh, I need to use your tanning rack. Could you please? Could you please leave? Move. Could you move? Yeah. Get it. Uh, okay. Thank. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Get. Get out. Get out. Get out. All right. So Tyler, if you go to a tanning rack and go right to the miscellaneous section, what is this? These are bandages, and it's part of a really cool mod that will help your combat experience a lot. Instead of just harboring potions and stuff, you Mm -hmm. can create bandages with the mod First Aid P2. 
PS4. Now, what this mod is going to do, obviously, you saw that there were bandages. It's like completely reworking this first aid aspect of Skyrim. It's also yep. going to tweak combat because if you lose 50% of your health, you're going to stop regenerating. If you use, if you lose 65% of your health, life healing potions will not have any effect. If you lose 80% of your health, your carrying capacity is going to be diminished. Yes. So it adds a whole like system of injury to the combat. And instead of like, oh, I'm just going to be constantly hoarding all these potions and stuff. The goal of this is to get you to stick through the fight or bail if you have to. And then you can either, you know, stockpile some bandages or make them from tundra cotton or clean linen. And that way, instead of just using, oh, I'm going to drink this potion and I'm magically better, which, you know, fits in the world of Skyrim, but not for everyone. Now you can just go ahead and in your potions, apply these bandages. It's not for use in combat. Like you're not supposed to be using them in combat because they mm -hmm. take a while. It's not an instant fix like a potion. Yep. It's meant to, after combat, heal up your wounds. Yes. But there's also an additional uh, level of bandages you could go to uh, if you were to get infected. We all know that alcohol can help that. So I'm going to hop right in here to get a cooking uh, cooking pot here, and we'll show you the second part. Hey, just as an aside here, like when you get injured, it's not just you drink alcohol and it's better. But if I if something smarts pretty bad, like I bump my, my wrist and it smarts pretty bad, if I just, you know, have six beers, I feel much better. You know how, Tyler, when you're going around, like, the dungeons of Skyrim and stuff, and you're constantly, like, looking through urns and finding bottles upon bottles of isopropyl alcohol? No, but sure. Oh, sorry. Uh, I meant What I meant was mead. So if you come up to a cooking spit here and you go to miscellaneous, beer bandages. I love that idea that they're like, I think hey, it's so funny. Let's, let's actually use, like, some real-world thought here and, like, mm -hmm. you know pours like some alcohol on the wound and that should help with the bandages and they've made it work in Skyrim. So it'll disinfect. So if you do get infected, this will help with the disinfection of it yep. and it restores health for 15 seconds. Yeah. And you can see that it's just, you can make one set of them with Nordmead, one set of it with just typical ale. And then you can also use linen wraps and ale and linen wraps and Nordmead to make uh, clean linens. And it actually makes it, like, valuable to have... Because what else do you use linen for in Skyrim? You don't. Nothing. You, you just don't. What yeah. do you use tundra cotton in Skyrim for? Nothing. Yeah, like, it's basically nothing. This just adds a whole new level of, like, oh, now these take on a different meaning for me. I previously didn't ever care to use them. But now, it gives me a good use. I can <laughs> dip, dip them in some beer and I am good to go, no matter how deep that cut goes. It'll help you approach combat in different ways. If you're thinking about, I'm not going to use potions, I only have my bandages. So I can't just, you know, dump potions in my body during combat. I have to really think, engage appropriately, and then flee when necessary. Yeah, I think it gives you a good reason to go like, oh, I'm not just going to down all these potions. Oh, I'm not just going to use this healing spell. That's not what my build does. My guy is going to go, oh, I'm clearly outnumbered. I need to be smarter, evade them, and get away and do some, you know, go make some bandages at the town where I recover and then sleep for the night or something. I think that's a really cool, it's a really cool uh, role-playing additive to uh, the combat system. Yeah, yeah, it makes you pre-plan like how you would in The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt. Tyler, and you can't, oh my God. Hey, I took last week off intentionally, so give uh, me my gamer points. Yeah, wow, I just spoken like a true gamer. Give me it, it's mine. Give me it, it's mine. I want my gamer points. But Tyler, I think for the final mod, instead of patching ourselves up, we should learn how to uh, maybe ward off some of the dangers. Tyler, goddammit, can you teach me how to protect myself, please? Yeah, just so you don't need to use the bandages, maybe. So, yeah, yeah, I'd rather not. That there's beard a kind thing. of got sticky. <clears throat> there's a thing in Skyrim called wards that no mm -hmm. one ever uses yeah, no because ever them. they're really not worth it. You can only use wards when you're like casting it. It drains Magicka yeah. and it's bad for other builds. What if you wanted to use it all the time? Mm. That's where mod number four comes in, which is called Fire and Forget Wards, suggested by Cavellian Studios. Thank you very much. Thank you for that suggestion. Tori, why don't you fire a ward right now? All right. Let me just go ahead and... Well, there we go. 
The ward's cast, but I no longer have to hold the button down and it's no longer going to be constantly sucking magic. It'll, it, it just, I press it once, fire it like a regular spell and it's just up. And now that frees me up for, wow, I know it's in the middle of the day, but boy, could I just use some mage light. Now with that ward still up, I can go ahead and start casting other spells around while also having my sword there. Yep. You can use your bow, you can use other spells, you can use your sword. It frees you up to be able to engage in combat instead of only being on the defensive. Yep. So I could, you know, have the ward still going and boom, now I want to do some archery. Yeah, it's like a cool, like, shield that you can put in front of you. Well, maybe you shouldn't yeah, do Yeah, maybe archery, I can't Tori. do archery, but I can, I can, well, I can do that. If they're running directly at me, boy, am I just spot on... 50% of the time. One minute. One oh, minute one you minute. get okay. with that ward. There's a gentleman. So with the ward going, he can't touch me because I'm a good magic wielding boy, but I can just go ahead and blast him with all the flames I want. Yeah, it helps. I would say it works if you're a novice uh, mage. If you're an expert mage, it makes even more sense. But it really helps you, you know, put up that kind of force field in front of you where you're like, okay... I don't want to have to only be able to do just that. I want to be able to yep. regularly engage in combat. Okay, well. Look, oh, Tyler, there's some it's... more people. Tori, get that ward out. What if they could... Oh, okay. What if they were trying to shoot Wow, someone? the one time I have a fucking crack shot is when I shouldn't have. I love it, though, because I genuinely never used wards, even when I did try doing some magic-based builds. They, it was just so annoying. I don't know why it was annoying, but it was... It, I don't like them, but having it where I can set it and then start pulling out other stuff and I have a force field that just follows me around, it's great. Yep, and it helps if you get a sword in your right hand. It, I think it's the ideal spell sword like mod. Oh, 100%. It is yeah, absolutely. 100% the most ideal spell sword mod, mod because you can throw up your ward and then continue to use your other hand to attack. There's no constant magicka draining. It's the one magicka drain, and then you can continue to fight. Please yep. Oh, there's someone. Done. And look. And I, and I know where to now. loot them. Hey, Tori, where's the other bodies? Well, I did shoot them pretty far away, though, didn't I? I think it's going to be great for any build. I think it's going to be especially great for spell swords, and I think it should improve anyone's combat, make it, you know, not more difficult, but makes more sense. Like, yeah, it shouldn't yep. be hard just for hard's sake. It should be sensible. And I think a constant ward is sensible. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that all of these mods today are going to be helpful for at least one aspect. I mean, we, we gave you a new unarmed play style. We gave you a way to loot the bodies. We gave you a way to bandage up and we gave you a way to deflect damage and I think one of them is going to be right for just about anyone who watches this video, just to add a nice little tweak to how combat in Skyrim works. So if you have any mods you'd like to have us showcase on future episodes, you can send those to me on Twitter. I will be at Lurking Lion. I will be at Subtly Cool, or you can send them to at Shapeless Media. Also, if you want to watch more content, boy, do mm -hmm. we got it. We have a podcast that goes up every single Friday. It's called Baseless Claims. You can check it out on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. And boy, is it a good time. Yeah, I'll say it's a good time. We also just did a live stream on Halloween, Saturday night. Uh, it should be up by now, but if it's not, it'll be up soon. You can check out the full live stream. We were uh, inebriated and carving pumpkins, and Tay actually died. Yeah, yeah. Tay we, I mean, we haven't filmed it yet. It's not Saturday as of recording this right now, but I'm anticipating maybe Tay died. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and clickbait that one. Tay died? <gasps> Question mark story time. How we killed our friend during a live stream. Oops. Happy Halloween. Say goodbye to itchy ass.